They're four and three and in the eight and under Craig McRae they've got a distinctively new flavour. So what do we make of the magpies? Josh Gablich has been keeping a close eye over Collingwood. Josh, what do we make of their season so far? They've been exciting. It's been a, a very exciting start to 2022, Sarah. The Pies, as you said, they're four and three and this is a team they finished 17th last year with only six wins on the board, and they've been in, in really six games. They should have beaten Geelong if you go back to round four. They were five goals up at three-quarter time on the back of nine third-quarter goals, and they just lost that. So aside from the performance against West Coast, they've been really, really exciting. So as you say, 17th last year, so perhaps one of the surprises is that they are in the eight. What else has surprised you so far? A big surprise factor has been Jack Ginevan. <laughs> Sarah, you've got to think about this kid. He's a rookie. He'd played five games before the start of 2022. He's burst onto the scene. You look at his last week. We go back to Anzac Day. Five goals. Anzac Day medal winning performance. The blonde hair. The, the blonde long hair. sleeves. <laughs> GoPro gate. He's really withstood everything. And then to back it up with three goals against the Suns yesterday, I thought was really impressive. So I've been super impressed by Jack Ginevan. You wouldn't be surprised by another young star, though, would you, in Nick Dacos? No, Nick Dacos <laughs> has come exactly as advertised. Nathan Buckley put on the record last year that he would have played senior footy as a 17-year-old, and we can see why now. If you look at his first seven games, it's, it's obvious why he's a rising star favourite with Jason Horn francis and Josh Rochelle. He's been incredible. He's only had less than 20 touches once, and that was yesterday. He had 19 touches. He was still pretty good. Two games in seven days. He's been sensational, Nick Dacos. Yeah, certainly a star on the rise and probably a star that already has arrived for Collingwood. Now, speaking of stars, the All-Australian, I know it's only seven rounds in, Josh, but if you had to put your money on a Collingwood player, who are you selecting in the team? Sarah, I really like Jordan Degoe. I mean, who doesn't? But when you think about what he's been through past, across the past six months, I mean, he wasn't training at the club until January 21st. Yeah. No one would have predicted that he'd start the season as well as he had. He's, he's polled... Coaches votes in four of the six games he's played. He obviously missed that game for that tackle on Patrick Dangerfield. But he's been sensational. And obviously, against the Gold Coast Suns, he was a little bit down. But he was coming off a week where he barely trained due to gastro. So if you drill into his games that he's played, he's played really well so far. And it's just his kicking. He looks like a star as a midfielder. He looks like, if he continues this form, he'll be a first-time All-Australian by the end of the season. Now, we saw yesterday life without Brody Grundy when it comes to Collingwood and their ruck stocks. It's a big injury, isn't it? A PCL. He could be out for as many as 12 weeks. How's the health of the club going otherwise? Well, every club has injuries, Sarah. But if you look at the pies, they've got a handful mm -hmm. that are long-term. And it's not just Brody Grundy. It's Nathan Kruger. He's played three games. He's not going to play again this year due to a shoulder injury. Jamie Elliott has a shoulder injury as well. He's going to miss the best part of three months. And then you look at Ash Johnson, a young forward who would have played some senior footy by now. He misses 10 weeks with a hamstring issue. So there is a number of, of issues in terms of, of injuries at the Pies. Charlie Dean's another one who would have played as a key defender from sort of round one until round seven with no Jordan Rufford who's missed with a, with a shoulder and then a finger issue. So they have had some long-term issues with personnel, but Brody Grundy's the big one. I mean, it's a, it's a big unknown right now. Darcy Cameron and Aidan Begg were well beaten by Jared Witts, but Jared Witts will do that to a lot of players this yeah. season. So Grundy is the one. If they can get him back sooner rather than later, but it's going to be a long 10 to 12 weeks, as you said. Now, we do like it when the big clubs are up and running. Collingwood's certainly one of the biggest in the land. They're in the eight. I know it's only early days. Could finals potentially be on the cards? I would not have thought this seven weeks ago, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. But seven rounds in, they're in the eight right now. And they, they, they look like a team that's just going to be thereabouts all season long. And I think the Collingwood faithful, that's all they can ask for. Under a new coach, a new coaching department, a, a really a, a new look footy club when you think about the administration as well. So I don't think they're, they're good enough to play finals. I thought they were a bottom six team at the start of the year. But right now, they could be in contention for the duration of 23 rounds. They're certainly fun to watch and that's what we've made of the Magpies season so far.